Jumpstart Your Joy is a podcast that looks at the inspiration, intention, and action that you could take in your everyday to bring more joy into your life. This is Paula Jenkins. Let's get on to the show. This week on the show, I'm talking about liminal space. (laughs) And I'm really excited to dive into this topic, mostly because It's been popping up in my world for a little while now. My first interaction and thinking about liminal space came up when I was watching some Disney Park vloggers on YouTube, and they were talking about liminal space in amusement parks. And I was like, this is fascinating. And so I started to dig in more because liminal space, of course, is defined loosely as meaning a threshold of types. It's any point or place of entering or beginning. A liminal space is the time between what was and what's next. It's a place of transition, a season of waiting, and of not knowing. It's also a time or a place where some sort of transformation generally takes place. And so that's a definition I'm getting from the site in aliminalspace.org. And, you know, it's great information to have as we start this talk. Before we get into this discussion about liminal space, I want to wish you all a very warm welcome and say thanks so much for tuning in to Jumpstart Your Joy. I love doing this podcast and it is all because you listen and I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. If you're new and you want to find out more, you can head to the website, which is jumpstartyourjoy.com, along with the show notes where I will link out to some of the people I'm referencing, the sites I'm referencing, some shows, some YouTube programs, uh, a lot of great stuff. And while you're there, if you really love this topic of liminal space, it's very close to the entire theme of 2021, which was finding joy in the messy middle. I think messy middle and liminal space are closely related like cousins. So if you love this topic, go buy my book on my website, (laughs) jumpstartyourjoy.com under book, or peruse the 2021 season because we talked, I talked a lot about this kind of topic, although this is a totally new lens on it. And of course, if you were not aware, you can also now watch many of my interviews on YouTube and I'll put a link to those in the show notes as well. So let's jump into talking about liminal space. As we walk through this, here's the setup for how I'm gonna approach it. One, I'll talk more about the definition And then why are we looking at this right now? How does it fit into intentional comfort? We will also talk about the types of liminal space because there are several different kinds and I'll share those four types with you. Then next we're gonna talk about how we find our way into these liminal spaces. I think it gets broken down into really two ways, either intentionally or through happenstance. And I think that impacts how we view our time in a liminal space and how we move through it. And then I will offer up four ideas on how to think about liminal space if you find yourself there. So let's dive right in on what is liminal space. It's that space in between what was, so where we've been and and where we're going. It's a threshold. And it often is a place of transformation, although it doesn't have to be because sometimes it's just a place of waiting. Let's consider another definition of liminal space. And this is from a, an aesthetic site. And it says the aesthetic known as liminal space is a location which is the transition between two other locations or states of being. Typically, these are abandoned and often empty, like a mall at 4 a.m. or a school hallway during summer, for example. This makes the space feel frozen and slightly unsettling, but also very familiar to our minds. And I really love this definition because it also speaks to some of the ways that liminal space has also been um, in, reintroduced to my own life recently. One of the inspirations here for talking about liminal space even was a couple of Disney vloggers that were talking about liminal space and how it can be found in Disneyland or in amusement parks. And of course, what they then walked through in these videos, and I'll link up to one of them in the show notes, was waiting on a train platform or waiting for the monorail or the spaces in between two lands of an amusement park and the pathways there, or sometimes going under a tunnel to reveal something new. That tunnel space is definitely liminal space as well. I also think in the larger context of things that maybe amusement parks themselves, they kind of count as liminal space because they are out of our experience of what is 
part of our normal everyday life. And then I found that liminal space kept popping up again and again. And most recently, the conversation that I had with William J. Peters, the author of At Heaven's Door, he and I were talking about shared death experiences. And we talk about it a little bit near the end of that conversation. I'll link up to that as well. Death is also a transition that takes us into liminal space between this world and the next. So there's another kind of liminal space and all these things started swirling together. And that's where this episode came out of. And so that's the definition and the context for why I'm like inspired to talk about it right now. In many times and places, and even some of the research that I did around this, people start to reference liminal space as being rather uncomfortable because it is that crossroads or that transitional space between one thing and the next. And if we can talk about it and find ways to own that space and normalize it, like William J. Peters said in our interview about death, if we talk more about these things and start to accept them in our lives, then it becomes a lot easier to embrace them or at least live with them. And That's what I want to do here in this episode. I think there's four different kinds of liminal space. The four that get broken up here are emotional, physical, and metaphorical, as defined by Very Well Mind. And I would like to add a fourth into this, which is spiritual liminal space. And so let's talk about what each of these these means. In the emotional liminal space, you would have events that are life events. You have divorce, moving, graduation, illness, probably changing jobs or work. You might have loss of a loved one. For physical liminal space, many of the things that those Disney vloggers were talking about, which is the space itself. So airports count as a physical space, hallways, doorways, trains, airplanes, bridges, I would even throw in commutes when you're traveling from home to work. That is also liminal space. And the last one for physical that I want to talk about is abandoned places, which is another thing that drew me into this topic, watching proper people on YouTube. I'll link up to them. But they seek out and go into abandoned places and explore them. There's metaphorical, as defined by Very Well Mind, as the space in between two decisions. And so maybe that overlaps a little bit with job changes or what to do next in your life, those kinds of things. It's the space between two decisions. And then under spiritual, I think there's a lot of these that are things that I like to talk about in this show, that labyrinths for sure. Um, I'm a trained labyrinth facilitator. Labyrinths offer you a way to enter into meditation. Meditation is a spiritual liminal space. Retreats are spiritual liminal spaces. Probably any experience you would have in a, a place of worship. Uh, A lot of those bring you into the liminal space between this world and whatever the other world is as well. And stories that we hear about death and dying often are spiritual in addition to being a physical transition. And I really love having added in spiritual as one of the liminal spaces or one of the categories for liminal space because it gets me back to this quote that I found by a Franciscan friar and author. His name is Richard Rohr, and he describes liminal space as this where we are betwixt and between the familiar and the completely unknown. There alone is our world left behind, while we are not yet sure of the new existence. That's a good space where genuine newness can begin, get there often, and stay there as long as you can by whatever means possible. This is sacred space where the old world is able to fall apart and a bigger world is revealed. If we don't encounter liminal space in our lives, we start idealizing normalcy. And I love this because Richard Rohr is reflecting on what happens when we, either by our own choice, enter into liminal space in a spiritual way and allow ourselves to question things, or he's also talking about those things where life events happen to us And we find ourselves in the midst of liminal space, maybe not by our own choosing. And so this is that next section is I really think that while we can observe that there's four different kinds of liminal space, I think the way that we enter into that liminal space ultimately defines it gives us a perspective on how we feel about being in that space. The first way is by intentionally entering into a liminal space. 
And the second way is by finding ourselves there by happenstance. And so what do I mean by that? When I'm talking about intentionally entering into liminal space, I mean, it's the time that we're planning on going on a trip. And so we enter into the airport knowing what our destination is and that we have a plan on getting there. (laughs) Another one in a spiritual realm might be we intend to go and use a labyrinth as a meditation tool. And so we know we're going to walk the path, we'll sit in the center, and then we'll walk back out. We have the path. We, we know both of the path and why we're following it, and so it makes it very approachable. I love this idea of intentional liminal space. I've become most fascinated with it recently. Like I mentioned, proper people on YouTube, these are two guys that walk into abandoned places and explore them. And in one of their videos, I wish I could remember which one because I would link it up for you, but they talk about how it is so calming and so beautiful to walk into a space where no one has been for a really long time because they just feel like the rest of the world falls away. And to me, that very much sounded meditative. It sounded like what they are doing is they're setting a container for themselves to leave kind of the realm of this world and go into something else for a period of time. And they even talk about how time kind of stands still for them while they're at these abandoned places. So it's probably a mix of zone of genius. They love doing this. But also it's acknowledging that that liminal space has a very different quality to it than the rest of the world that we live in. And so that's that's an intentional visiting of a liminal space. And we see this anytime that we go on a journey or taking a trip. And sometimes even the emotional things of liminal space, we enter into willingly, like if it is our decision to have a divorce or it is our decision to move. Those are all examples of intentional liminal space. I think the more frightening and difficult one becomes when it's happenstance. And all of us have been in this space for the last two years. (laughs) We know this messy middle kind of phenomenon Uh, Because illness or a pandemic is for sure a happenstance kind of liminal space that we get pushed into. Some other examples of that might be any kind of illness. Death, I mean, is rarely planned. So I would say that that's also a happenstance. Anytime a life event just kind of happens to us without us choosing it, it is a happenstance type of event. And one of the places that I saw this play out that was so fascinating as well is if you've watched HBO Max's Station Eleven. It is an excellent 10-part TV series, which I'll try not to give many spoilers, (laughs) but it's about what happens to people after the pandemic of a very contagious flu outbreak. And so only a very few people survive. And some of them had been on an airplane that landed at an airport, and the airport itself becomes their home for a period of time. And so This is an example of happenstance. They, a series of events led them to be basically protected within this airport and it became their home. But yet they're living in this liminal space constantly throughout the entire series because they don't really know what's happening in the world around them. And I really found it to be beautiful and interesting, the things that they embraced and then the things that they decided not to follow as a new community forming within this liminal space. I highly recommend you go watch it. It's so fascinating. But it does give a great example of what people do when they're thrown into a happenstance liminal space. And those are the ones that I think are confusing and upsetting and frustrating and can be kind of fearful for us because as humans, we really want to know how a story ends, especially when it's our own. And so when we know where the beginning and the middle is, but we don't know what the ending is, that's when things get kicked up and it's very frightening for us to stay in that space for very long. That's another reason why I loved Station Eleven. And I think the takeaway here for recognizing that some things, sometimes we intentionally enter into liminal space. And sometimes we just get thrown there. And I would, I think the takeaway for me there is that the intentional times are the times that we can embrace and that we can grow through. And that like when we're there and we're happy about it, then that's a whole different story than we're there and we're frustrated or scared about it. So the last bit of this episode is how do we move through liminal space? If we find ourselves there and it's either, it's the trip that's gone on too long 
or it's truly a happenstance type liminal space that we don't really want to be in, but yet here we are. The first thing that I know to be true about liminal space is that it's transitional. I mean, that's part of its definition. So if we can accept and embrace that it is a transitional time, it means that it is not forever. Uh, I think as humans, we often get so wrapped up in this idea that this moment, is, especially when it's bad, we have this fear that this will be how it is forever. But as we know, the only constant is change. And so sooner or later, we will be out of this transition. That doesn't negate that it isn't hard in the moment. But I think keeping an eye on the fact that we will transition out of whatever this is, this liminal space to whatever is next can be comforting. There can be comfort found in the fact that you're choosing to see it as transitional and recognize that instead of choosing to see it as something fearful and bad, right? That's the intentional comfort of that, of seeing it as transitional, and it will be over. The second thing when we're dealing with liminal space, and this may have somewhat to do with the, the kinds of liminal space that are more intentional, but there's an element here that works for the happenstance as well. And number two is planning and preparation. So if you're going on a trip, <laughs> it's a good example, or if you're going to go enter into an abandoned space, you want to take all of the things that you know you will need. And maybe you kind of do that contingency planning part of taking more than you need. <laughs> so for example, if I'm visiting an amusement park, I always take an extra battery for my phone. I take an extra empty water bottle that collapses. I take an extra pair of socks. There's pieces that go into my bag because I know I might run into some situations where I won't have these things readily available to me where I am. And so I pack them just in case. <laughs> now, there's a limit, right? Like you don't want to be carrying a huge bag around with you. But planning ahead a little bit can make that liminal space more enjoyable. And the same thing goes for any kind of trip or if you're entering into an abandoned building. Make sure you've thought ahead for some of the contingencies that might happen so you can be prepared. Because I think when we go into a space and we know I've got it, then our whole demeanor changes and the confidence that we have about self-sufficiency can change how we see the space itself. I also think when we enter into a happenstance liminal space, we can have a similar kind of thing. Here in my own home, we still have what we lovingly call the pandemic pantry. And what that means is we decided, well, we don't really want to be um, at the whim of some of the supply line things. And especially I am celiac. I do not eat any wheat or gluten. And so it became something that I needed to have at home. If I wanted to have gluten-free pasta, I want to know that it's here and that I'm not going to have to go to a store and be looking for it during a pandemic and during some shortages. So that's that's a way for me to plan and prepare and know that I've got what I need here. And frankly, it might be a practice for us that we will continue because it's really nice not having to like run out to the store all the time. I'm prepared here. And then if something strange happens, I have the supplies here that I need. And there are ev events, obviously, that we don't know what will happen. But I think that if you go into a situation confident that you have all the things you need and that you feel self-reliant in those moments... Um, if you look back at Station Eleven, that's one of the things that sets some of these characters apart is some of them are extremely self-reliant. And it is when they take that to heart that they are the ones that survive. The third thing that we can do as we enter into liminal space is is always the hardest. <laughs> and that is acceptance or surrender. So often when we enter into a space that feels unfamiliar or unsure or a situation where it is transitional and we don't know how long it will last, is that we start to fight the things that we cannot control. And it is that right there that when we get into that space of fighting everything because we don't know what to expect or we don't know what it means, the fighting itself becomes more painful to us as people than whatever the thing is itself. Like we're adding a layer of drama into it when we're just in fight mode constantly when it's not even necessary or helpful. And so if you can ease in, and I know it's difficult, but if you can ease into accepting, this is what's happened. And I'm going to take this day by day and see how I can react to it. Because it also doesn't really make a lot of sense in an emergency, especially in a happenstance liminal space. If you're putting all of your energy into fighting reality, then 
I think you're going to miss some of the things that could help you move forward, especially if it is truly an emergency. (laughs) Your energy is better spent on focusing on the things that you can control and moving forward from there. And the fourth thing that I think can help us move through this is, especially if it's a prolonged transitional liminal space, is restructuring. Um, Restructuring how we see things, restructuring how we do things, and restructuring the plan for our own lives if it is truly a life-changing event. An example for that is, you know, in speaking with William J. Peters about shared death experiences is lots of times people don't even talk about a shared death experience, which is basically when you have an experience with someone who is dying where either they visit you after they've left this realm or perhaps you see visions of them at or around the time of their death, but there's something about it that is reassuring to you as a loved one and you have not passed on, but that it's reassuring to you as you remain on this earth that this person is in a good place and that they have transitioned to somewhere else. And in that, if you fight that or if you don't believe that it, that the shared death experience happened or if you just remain in fear about why it happened or how it happened, then that leaves you stuck in the liminal space. But when you can restructure and accept that that thing just happened, you got a visit from your grandmother, in my case, and see that that actually is a part of the reality that happened and then move forward from that, then there is more comfort in your life because you can accept what happened and move forward. Another example of restructuring would be kind of the pandemic pantry in our home. Or I've talked about this one before as well. I record and I do most of my business out of the kitchen in our home. And we don't have a big house, but I also didn't want to have to keep this kitchen sparkling clean while everyone was home during a pandemic. So I bought a folding screen and that's a restructuring. I've accepted what's happening. I've decided I'm not just going to be cleaning nonstop in the space behind me. And I've acknowledged that this is just something that we're going to get through as a transition together. And this is just an added layer of comfort. If you meet with me on Zoom, you're not paying attention to the mess, you know, the the kitchen or the mess in the sink behind me. And I'm not worried about what you're looking at either. Intentional comfort. I've set it up. I've found more joy on the other side of that. So those are the four ways to move through the liminal space piece if that's where you found yourself. And I think maybe the fifth that I would add uh, as the bonus is to give yourself grace, especially if you found yourself in that happenstance kind of liminal space area. Change and transition is not easy. And so the more that you can just be kind to yourself and acknowledge that it's going to be some somewhat difficult for us, each of us, I think the easier of a time you will have in getting to the other side where things feel back to normal. And then the reflection of it being, like Richard Rohr said, that it is through wrestling these things. And this is not to put a silver lining on anything at all, but just as a reflection is every time that I've gone through happenstance liminal space and not known what was going to happen, and I've wrestled with it, and I've wrangled with it, on the other side of it, I have a much better understanding of who I am and how I could face adversity in the future. That helps grow the self-confidence for the next time that I meet something that I'm not sure about. I will also say if you are willingly going in the intentional kind of liminal space, there's a certain amount of intentional comfort with that. Like the guys at Proper People say, they like entering into that space because it feels like they've left their troubles back in the real world and that they can just be in the moment. It's It's a very present thing. I find that same thing inside of a labyrinth. When I intentionally enter into liminal space with a labyrinth or through meditation or just through reflection or journaling, new insights come out about who I am and what things mean in my life and how I could approach something that maybe is difficult in a new way. So I think learning to let go of the fear that often comes into entering into the unknown and just accepting it whether it be an intentional liminal space or a happenstance one, you grow through these events and you find more out about yourself. And learning to let go of the fear is one of the biggest steps, I think, in the whole process. So that's it about liminal space. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to reach out, uh, if you've had any aha moments here or want to share about your own adventures in liminal space, I'd love to hear from you. And you can always email me at jumpstartyourjoy at gmail.com and share it with a friend if you really enjoyed it. And of course, if you want to watch the interview that I had with William J. Peters, uh, you can find that over at YouTube. I'll put the link in the show notes. And of course, you can also buy my book, Jumpstart Your Joy, Heart-Centered Ways to Find Joy in the Messy Middle. That's at my website at jumpstartyourjoy.com. Next week on the show, I'm really delighted to have Alana Burke joining me. Alana has been around on the internet for a good long time. Um, you may know her from Your Life's Workshop and more contemporarily, the Good Business Podcast. And she's also a coach for small businesses. I hope you'll come on back for that conversation. And until then, I hope that your days are filled with so much joy.